Today we are trained a new format on Umadu Sailing. Q and A. Questions and answers. Fragen und Antworten. This is Tali from Russia. This is Gunther from Moscow. <laughs> In the last weeks and months we got a lot of questions from our followers, from our subscribers, so we decided to answer part of them before we go on. So we don't, uh, we are not able to, to answer all the questions because we would sit here until uh, tomorrow morning, so many questions uh, have been asked. Uh, but we picked out uh, some of the major ones. And uh, basically uh, all these questions we can divide in two parts. One is about our experience with, uh, with a boat yard uh, in Caribbean. And the second part is uh, what uh, actually are our plans for the future, for the near future in these strange times where traveling is... Uh, uh, <laughs> It's not easy. The first and most important question uh, is what are our plans for future? For the near future, which means uh, uh, we stayed here now more than a year in Grenada, Cariacou. Uh, it's uh, time to... I'm just showing. <laughs> It's time to leave, as beautiful it is here, but it's time to go. Uh, since we left Asia, our plan was to go slowly across the Indian Ocean, Africa, uh, and South America, South America, Ibiza, the Caribbean, Ibiza, and then uh, through the Panama Can Canal to the Pacific. Our way of travel is uh, slow. Uh, we want but to. Deep. <laughs> we want to explore uh, all these little atolls, islands. Uh, uh, what we can do now in the Pacific is uh, uh, to go to French Polynesia, Polynesia uh, Tahiti, but that's for the tourists, uh, and then cross the whole Pacific thousands and thousands of miles non-stop because everything else is closed. So that's not a plan, that's not an opportunity. So it's we will not our, just not our style. So we will postpone the Pacific, uh, maybe for next year, uh, we will see what happens. But actually, what, uh, where we are now, we are in big crossroad. It's not even crossroad. <laughs> uh, should we go west, means to the Pacific, or should we go east and uh, go to Azores, Madeira, and then to the Mediterranean? We will see what will future will bring us, but what we know for sure that after the boat yard uh, we want to sail to Colombia. Why to Colombia? First it's open. <laughs> uh, second it's a wonderful country. Third it's out of the hurricane belt. We don't have to worry about hurricane season. And fourth is uh, in Colombia, in Bogota, uh, they have a Russian embassy and uh, where I should <coughs> apply for my new passport. The, 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 the passport is, is uh, finished in October and it's full, full. It's every page and every centimeter is full of stamps, uh, in and exit stamps, so we cannot travel anymore. We need this passport. So this is the nearest, uh, our nearest plan. After boat yard in, in Karikou, we will sail to Colombia and explore this Country. And what we do after this, uh, we will decide later. Uh, it has to be later because uh, the situations are changing so fast that we don't know what, what we can do. But for sure we don't go to the Pacific like we planned uh, this year. The most important thing what I wanted to say is while a lot of you are still sitting in there in your own country and some of you even not allowed to go abroad 
if a sailing boat we have big advantage that we can travel with a lot of restrictions but we still can move and this is a big plus of living on traveling and traveling for sailing boat so jump on a sailing boat but how long shall I kill our prophets So now we are 100 days on the boat yard. 100 days? Of a nightmare, every day. <laughs> so we go up at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, go to the shipyard, I work from 8 to 5 in this heat. Uh, it's uh, pretty <laughs> wearing out, we are tired, uh, but we have still a lot to do, so there will be one, two, three more weeks, uh, and then hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we are back out in the water. So, why we are so long on the boat here? Uh, the, we have copper coat uh, for the underwater ship instead of normal anti-fouling. Normal anti-fouling means every year yeah, you have to haul out and repaint it. Copper coat gives you five, six, seven years, uh, which means you don't have to uh, go out uh, and pay for all the haul out and all these things. Uh, the disadvantage is uh, you are not uh, maintaining uh, the boat for this long time, so things are piling up. So, what was to do? Engines. One engine, One engine has uh, a problem. They're replacing the toilet. Uh, all, uh, all, all the seacocks have, have to uh, come out. Uh, part of them we reseal, part of them uh, we put new ones. Um, yes. painting, painting the whole ball and repaint. And we repaint the decks, we repaint the house, the cockpit and uh, inside the saloon and one sleeping room. Uh, and we had to do a rigging check, uh, uh, oh. re replace uh, some parts of the rigging. I don't know, 30, 50 questions. What what would really happen with your mast? Actually, nothing happened to the mast. Uh, it was disclosed that we lost the mast. Uh, what was the reason? Uh, uh, there is this stainless steel part on the mast uh, where the shrouds uh, are attached, uh, built on uh, um, very uh, decent uh, size stainless steel, uh, but this broke. This broke just apart and it uh, was hanging just uh, between this and the mast, so we didn't lose it. So, yeah, we were really lucky. Mm -hmm. So normally you, you, you go up regularly, especially in uh, before crossing an ocean or doing uh, bigger trips to check the mast. I do. Uh, Tali goes because I have fear of heights. Uh, she li likes to uh, hanging up there and see the world from above. Uh, but the problem is with stainless steel, uh, you don't see anything, you don't see a crack or something, it just breaks. Uh, so uh, what to do about this uh, uh, and uh, what you have to, to check on the rigging and, and how to do it, we will tell you in a uh, in one of the next films. Hundred days on the boat yard. Hundred days. And the main problem of uh, why we are so long, because we are in the Caribbean and we are on island and this is so called Caribbean time, island time, Grenada time, Carib time, whatever. And uh, everything what you expect takes time. Uh, waiting for all specialists. They, they tell you that you will come tomorrow. They will come, I don't know, Three next weeks two late. weeks because tomorrow is another day. Um, or they say they come on Tuesday, but they didn't say which month. Or uh, spare parts are. Uh, spare parts. 
uh, hard to get and it takes time. Uh, the process of shipping and bringing it to the customs and so on, it takes time. <laughs> But we still really, um, I think we still uh, feel lucky here because you are really like, you're, you, you get the feeling like you are at home. You got this wonderful apartment for uh, all this time when we are on a boat yard, which is very, very important. Our original plan was uh, to go to Trinidad last year. August. August 2020. We wanted 2020. to go to Trinidad boatyard because um, yeah, it's a well-known place to repair your boat, refit yes. your boat. And you can get everything there. You don't have to import things. They have everything. They are much more professional there and it should uh, be faster. Uh, but it was not possible. Trinidad is closed since March last and year. And it's still closed. And closed, closed. So nobody can go in uh, with a boat, nobody can go out. Some people have uh, stored their boat in Trinidad, uh, flew home, and they are not allowed to come back. So the boat is actually caught in Trinidad borders. They cannot go out. You no, know, sometimes, uh, as, as we really know everybody, uh, sometimes uh, I was going once uh, from the boat yard to home, and uh, Rufus, uh, the uh, guy from the... Vegetable, vegetable shop, shop uh, grocery shop. He said to me, ah, you look tired. Wait a second. So, and he came up from the shop with two lunch boxes, with dinner, local dinner for us. He said, so this is just for you. No, no pain. No, this is just for you. Go to home, take your you dinner. You look hungry. And relax. <laughs> and I don't remember that it happened somewhere in other, I don't know, our last five years, that uh, local people had poor cruisers. <laughs> it's a bit like family, yeah? yeah? If we are not too tired in the evening, there is every day or every second day, there is in some bar, restaurant, there is live music. It's really a wonderful. <laughs> So people are asking us, uh, we, uh, we made a film with three performance catamarans, we made another film with another performance cruising catamaran, and people are asking us, show us more. Uh, we are not a film company, so we cannot fly to somewhere to uh, present a boat, but whenever we meet uh, one of the performance catamarans, we will make a new video. Uh, this is uh, Barnacle C, a very old friend of mine. I think we know each other since 14 or 15 years. Uh, and they are on a performance cruising catamaran. And uh, as soon as they are out of the shipyard, uh, we will make a video with them. We will go for sailing. He will sail this boat and get experience with another performance catamaran. I am allowed to sail another boat. <laughs> and uh, as usual, we will talk to the owners about the pros and cons uh, and, and, and show a bit uh, this boat. Uh, it's a catamaran uh, designed by Eric Le Rouge. And uh, as soon as we are here in this, let's say, Caribbean area, area and you are on the performance catamaran and somewhere, in our vicinity, we would be happy to meet you and to show your boat because people are really, really interesting in non-production, not non-mass production boats. So just help us to educate another people. <laughs> What is most important for us is uh, Karyaku drum traditions. 
So Zulu is known as one of the best dramas of the Caribbean. And uh, Tali uh, took some drum lessons with him. Yes, yes, I'm going every, twi twice a week I'm going for drum lessons to Shaka Zulu. I, I feel it, yeah? Yes, sir. I just sometimes cannot fall. <laughs> okay. But we'll do it as much as we can. Yep. She is a pretty fast learner after even uh, only three uh, uh, lessons. Uh, she participated in a concert with him uh, and people were really wondering. Three. Three lessons. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Only three lessons for her. Hello, Brida. She does know she needs more. I'm sure if you are the magician or she is just so cool. Let us pause. And Zulu doesn't only play drums, teaches to play drums, but he is uh, building drums. Say he is making two drums uh, for us, uh, which we will take with us. Uh, uh, having music, uh, our own music on the boat and carry the, the spirit of, uh, the musical spirit of Kariaku with us to our, one of our next destinations. Hey, uh, Thank you very much for commenting us. Uh, uh, a lot of comments uh, are very, very, very important for us to uh, get some response to our films. And second, it helps on YouTube to grow the channel. And now we turn around uh, because we have a question to you. So if you are not you question us, we are <laughs> questioning you. So if you are cruising and sailing boat right now. What are your plans? How you plan? How you plan your trips? Uh, how you want? How you adjust your travel to all these restrictions? Where you want to go? So tell us in your comments. It's really interesting for us, and it helps us to build our plans more precise, more nice, more interesting. And again, uh, thanks, guys, for Thank watching uh, Umadum Sailing, for subscribing our channel for commenting, uh, yeah, and uh, thank you that you endured uh, this uh, dog, 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 dog film. It's very unusual on Umadum sailing, but we had the idea we have to really answer uh, a lot of uh, questions coming. We have to answer them. Have fun. Thank you.